Hello everyone, Dr. Ames here. This time I'd like to talk to you about marketing and communications uh, in the context of nonprofits. There's definitely a need for marketing when you think about it. Uh, nonprofits are in an incredibly competitive environment. They have competition for funding uh, from corporations, uh, foundations and individuals themselves. They have competition in advocating a particular cause or social goal. There are just simply plenty of nonprofits out there. There's competition simply for your attention. Uh, there is so much everyday noise that uh, it's hard to get noticed. And you're competing not just with nonprofit messages, but all the clutter of advertising and promotional messages that exist out there. So you have competition from nonprofits, from for-profit companies, from public organizations that are engaged in similar activities as you are. And all of this competition plus generic competition against alternative uses of uh, people's time and money. There are always other choices for people, you know, in other words, to spend their money on or to spend their time uh, supporting. Um, and the caveat about marketing that's most important to remember here about the context of nonprofits is that the marketing, the promotional efforts you put out uh, must serve your mission. They can't become the primary driver of what your organization as a nonprofit does. They can't supplant the mission, doing the business or raising the money or whatever activities the marketing produces. And certainly, communication and marketing are not synonymous terms. Uh, communication is simply a transmission or exchange of information. But marketing is communication with a specific purpose of influencing the behavior of someone else to make a choice to do something to buy something, to try something, to purchase, to have a service, whatever it might be. So communication is really broader and more complex and understanding the uh, principles by which information is transmitted and received, that, that's important. Um, and there are various technologies that are employed. So there's a lot going on in kind of communication to understand. Um, marketing, uses communication as a vehicle and makes it uh, help their very specific purpose. And so it draws on a variety of theories of communications and so forth, how to go about it, how to reach people and so forth. And certainly a lot of this is driven simply by the sheer amount of competition and the sheer number of messages that are out there competing for attention. Well, we can have different mindsets uh, just because we're in a nonprofit doesn't mean that we don't have or shouldn't do the things that make business successful. You have to get your name out there. You have to raise money uh, and all of those things. And you have a different marketing uh, mindset when you do that. Well, there are uh, three particular mindsets when you're talking about marketing. Uh, you can have a product mindset where your effective marketing depends on the quality of your product. You could have a sales mindset uh, where your effective marketing really depends on convincing people and uh, the ability to deliver your message. And you could have the target audience mindset uh, where your effective marketing depends on focusing on the needs and wants of consumers. Well, in the nonprofit, remember, we're not going to think of our people that we serve as consumers. They are our clients. So which of these do you think would be most likely uh, to reach the people that you want to serve? Well, obviously, it's got to be the target audience mindset. You have to know who is it you're trying to help. Um, and so that is very much the same thing that you do when you focus on a particular target segment. It's a group of individuals with very similar wants and needs that share some, those similar characteristics. Well, that's what you're looking for to find those people uh, that you can offer your product or your service to in some charitable way that you have in mind. So marketing can be commercial or it can be social. When it's commercial, it's really just looking for additional customers. Uh, it's looking for, though in the nonprofit context, for clients, new clients for programs and services. For example, if we look at the for-profit industry and you hear a 30 second ad for toothpaste, it seems simple, 
sometimes silly. Uh, we'll find ourselves maybe though later in the day, having that jingle run through our mind as we drive home in the car on, on the way home and so forth. So marketing techniques do work, they're pervasive, they're everywhere and they're the same things that we do in for-profit. We want to adopt those techniques in nonprofit ventures because they're successful. And so with that, we hear that ad and maybe a, a week later when we're shopping for toothpaste in the grocery store, it's possible that we just might look at that brand a little differently, maybe enough to actually look at the box and pick it up and take a look at it and compare it. If that happens, then you've been grabbed as a consumer by a successful marketing promotion. And these things that are going on are really simple on surface, but a lot of work and effort went into that. And uh, it had to understand our behavior and what might motivate us to look further or even pay attention and so forth. So we could also do some social marketing. This is different. We're not trying to sell you the product or service. We're trying to change some sort of human behavior. We're trying to improve uh, or fix some social problem in some way. So for example, a social marketing campaign might be used to try and reduce violence against women or to increase the number of people who sign up as uh, blood donors or something like that. Well, why should you use a social marketing approach? Well, it has a couple of advantages here. It does help you reach your target audience. People are very much using their social media today. Social marketing approach connects people on a level where they relate uh, in their daily lives to something or not. And so you can reach them with a social marketing campaign. Um, it helps you look at the people that you want to influence. And you hope to understand how you can sway them most effectively. And the second main advantage is that it simply that it works. There's, there's no reason that a well-run social marketing campaign can't be just as effective as commercial marketing in changing people's behavior as it can in getting people to do a transaction of some type. Now, nonprofits you know, often really assume that the public is gonna see and appreciate the benefits of their service or their product or their idea. No, this is not the way people think. That's not the way they function as consumers or in the case of consumers who need nonprofit services, clients, that's not necessarily true. You have to use a marketing mix to reach your, promotion, your target audience. You have to use the techniques of promotion and advertising and all those tools and so forth in order to accomplish that. So when should you run these social campaigns? Well, anytime you have an idea where you need to or want to change the behavior of a large number of people, then that's appropriate. That's when you should do it. Um, it could be a community. It could take place in a region. It could be uh, something larger, a whole nation. Uh, a small number of people is really not usually worth the effort of a social marketing campaign. You would like a large number of people that you could reach who share a lot of the similar things that make them part of a larger in-group, so to speak. But if you have smaller people, you could always go in uh, numbers of people. You could speak to them individually. You could speak to them as a group, but you may not need a social marketing campaign. Now, when you're trying to change behavior over a long period of time, uh, social marketing plans really do tend to be long-term projects. It takes time to get people to understand your idea of a cause, how serious it is, why they should part with their money and, and, for, and in fact support you in whatever that endeavor is. So when you're trying to change people's behavior permanently, um, you should look over for the long-term focus um, and measure your efforts as you go and see how you're doing. But it does take a long time and these are not going to be something you're going to do for a little while and you've solved society's problem. Society's problems take a long time to develop uh, generally and they take a while to work out. Generally speaking, uh, if you're asking people to you know, perform a particular action one time, efforts to convince them to do it more than once uh, would certainly use a social marketing campaign. Uh, that wouldn't be appropriate because that's more for an idea or a cause. Um, if you were asking, say, people at the office to give blood one time, well, social marketing campaign wouldn't be appropriate there. You could just talk to them as a group or send a mass announcement of some type. 
However, from a different perspective, a uh, concerted effort, say, by a blood bank to try and increase the number of people who donate blood regularly might use an office blood drive as part of an overall larger promotional campaign. And that's what we should do. Uh, and then marketing and promotion allow us to think in these terms in different ways. Um, and so when you have resources uh, that are necessary to manage a comprehensive effort, yes, that's the time to do it. If you don't have the resources, then you really have to seriously consider if you really want to pursue the idea or uh, take a look at how difficult would it be to get the resources necessary and is it worth the time and energy for the end result? So you want to do things that you have some leverage with, that you have some assets or skill or knowledge or something like that so you can move forward. So the social marketing campaign, while very effective in the right context, it should only be undertaken when you're ready to use the time and the resources to really make that thing work and to drive it. So how do you manage it? Well, it's like any project that you would do, whether you're in the for-profit industry or sector, I should say, or uh, in the nonprofit, you've got to understand what you're trying to accomplish. So you have to define it and you have to understand it. What is the problem you're trying to solve? What is the charity you're trying to do? Why are you doing it? Why is the purpose that it is so important? Because you need to understand it and be able to define it for yourself and articulate it to others in order to get support you need to move ahead with your idea. So you want to start by probably taking a more broad and general definition of what the problem is that you're thinking about working on uh, and attacking in some way with a nonprofit venture. So what are those goals? What are you trying to really accomplish? And be reasonable. And don't set your end goal immediately. I mean, you may have an end goal and you can set it, but not when you're going to get there necessarily how you're going to get there right away. So be reasonable and set increments. Well, in order to accomplish this, I could start by doing this and it will lead to other things. And you, you've started the planning process and strategy at that point. Certainly you have to know who am I serving? Who are my clients? Who's that target segment with my clients and it out there? And so there are different ways to look at these target groups of people. You do segmentation. And we know from marketing that we segment in a variety of ways. Uh, we can segment by benefits or functions or the users. Uh, many different ways we use demographics to further divide it down and to narrow down those target segments and so forth. But you certainly have to know who you want to serve. Who are you trying to benefit? Now your traditional subgroups that are out there, your broad, heterogeneous, general target audience is going to start maybe with household consumers or so forth. You break that down by age, depending on what you're trying to accomplish or gender. Ethnicity matters. Economic status, how much money do you make? And all of that, what do you do for a living? Past behavior, have you used the product before? Are you a frequent user or a temporary or a switcher or something like that when it comes to behavior with products? And do you have any income? Do you have access to products? Can you afford to buy anything? Well, you simply have to work through and investigate and analyze, and you have to ask a, a lot of questions uh, to help you figure out who it is you're trying to serve. Now, sometimes it's not too hard. Maybe you have a cause like fighting cancer, and maybe it's a very specific cancer, and why would you choose that to start a nonprofit, to disseminate information or provide some support or something? whatever it is. Well, generally people do that because they have an emotional connection. Something has happened to them in their life, maybe their family, their extended family, people they know, people they care about, and it affects them. And it affects them in a way that drives them to want to do something about it. And so they start a nonprofit. Um, and then once you start that nonprofit, if that's the situation, you have a pretty clear idea of who it is you want to serve. People with this particular one rare disease, for instance, that would be very helpful. But many times you're doing something that's a bigger idea, it's not quite as focused, and you do have to break it down by using demographics and various other categories of information to say, what are the likely subgroups that I can serve? So what are the subgroups? Uh, 
which subgroup out there of the various groups I can identify, various populations and so forth, has this problem. Okay, you've started to narrow down who your exact clients are. They exist in this subgroup more than this. So you may take a general message that hits all of them. But as you start your promotional efforts, you start to focus much more narrowly on the people with very specific needs. And as you can see here from these different uh, questions that you're asking, do these people, how much do they need the help? Is it a something related to economic status where you're going to have to give a lot of help and not get much revenue back when you provide products or services? You have to know this and think about it. And so how will I actually make this work? And what sort of challenges are, are going to be existent in the various client groups and the, the target segment, indeed, that you've decided that you're going to serve. So managing the campaign, once you've defined the problem, you understand it and so forth, well, you, you choose appropriate strategies. Uh, and there are all kinds of ways to do things out there, uh, appropriate strategies and, and so forth. Um, but you brainstorm. You write down your ideas. You keep track of what you're thinking. Um, and at some point, you look at each subgroup, you identify that you can help, and you say, how much time and resource will it take really to serve these people, these clients? And you start to craft specific ways to do that, specific strategic ways. Um, so you design your messages. You know who you want to say something to, so that helps you craft the message in terms that that group will understand, will receive properly, uh, relate to. Um, how are you going to say it matters. So you select your channel of communication. Is television the best way to reach your target audience? Will radio work? Should we use printed medium of some type? Print advertising. Uh, are billboards appropriate? Should we build mailing lists on our websites? And should we try email advocacy and things like that? Well, you certainly have to look at all these things, but you have budget limitations to look at, certainly. And what the most effective medium for you might be something you can't afford. So you have to gather this information and analyze it carefully and then make choices. On the other hand, you can also use your leverage as a nonprofit to try and get people to donate services and products for free to you that you can use to push your message further. And maybe they will offer you low cost ways to disseminate your message in these various channels. You can use publicity. Publicity is free. You send out press releases to local papers, to local TV stations. And if they do publicize and put that information out there, it hasn't cost you anything. So there are all kinds of ways to go about this, but you design the message to reach the people you've decided are the ones you're trying to help. You've selected the communication channel and then you can pre-test it, depending on how big this promotional thing might be. Um, talk to people. Run a focus group if you have time and uh, access to enough people and so forth. But test your ideas and messages through conversation, uh, bringing them up, letting people talk about it, and so forth. But at some point, you're going to implement it, you're going to do it, and you're going to move ahead with it. And so you have to keep information and track everything. That's a controlling function of management anyway, is gathering information. So you determine what information is important to gather as we go. And you want to hopefully find some way to measure the results of your promotional efforts. Well, certainly it's pretty hard to measure how well a billboard is doing and whether or not that brought anybody in. On the other hand, it's very easy to measure how many clicks you've got on your website, how many people have ordered something, how many people have donated. You can measure that over time and make graphs and charts and compare, are we doing better or worse and things like that. So you implement, implement and you evaluate as you go. Now here are some of the communication trends that we saw uh, in 2014. Uh, the top nonprofit goal, these things really haven't changed. Not very much, the percentages change a little bit, but the top goal has been acquiring new donors forever. That's what nonprofits do. And you can see in 2014, 53% of nonprofits says that's their number one goal. Uh, engaging community, 49%. Certainly there are all sorts of partnerships and things you can do working with the community. And, and often your idea, your cause for your nonprofit is something that benefits the community. So engaging the community is something that you'll do as a matter of course quite often. General brand awareness, 
letting people know that, hey, we exist, we're out there, we're a nonprofit, but yeah, we want you to know our name. And we want you to associate a very positive image with our name. We don't want you just to think that we're out there rescuing dogs and cats. We want you to think of when you hear our name as that's the best outfit out there that I could go to if I need to adopt a rescue pet, a pet, a cat or dog. And the fourth biggest thing, which is always on the list of top goals is retaining your current donors. Simply because that's where you get most of your donations from are donors who've given to you already before. So certainly we're gonna use the technology that we have today. I mentioned that we need two websites. We need a corporate website for the company and we need a social website to bring people in in a more conversational and social tone. Um, so these can be static or interactive. I recommend be interactive, that you use regular poll strategies that are at the heart of promotional strategies today. Poll strategies are designed to get people to call a number, to visit your website, to click on a link, to call you up and ask for a free brochure or a DVD, whatever it might be. You want to be as interactive as possible. You want to pull people in. So you need to have that social network presence. Facebook at a minimum, probably, even though Facebook does have its problems. Uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, have a Twitter presence. You want to be in these different social medias. So you've got your websites, your presence on the various medias. In 2015, here's some information from that year. Typical nonprofit communications again. One year later, what are we saying? Number one goal. It's gone up 4%. In fact, it's changed. It's engaging our community, which was the 49%. It's now at 57. On this survey, they probably had a different group of people that they surveyed and so forth. We still see the top goals. Uh, retaining current donors, general band awareness, and thought leadership. What we're not seeing here is getting new donors, which is quite surprising because generally that is the top thing in every list you see, um, what do communications stress? Where are their efforts? So this is kind of interesting. At the same time, all these things are related to getting new donors as well, because every time you get money, well, in fact, it's us say acquiring new donors and it's, it's just slightly less than the year before. So where are the communicator channels, communication channels? Well, just what I've been saying, your website, 93%. That's your regular, what you would consider like your business website, your corporate website. But your social media website, whether you've got one on Facebook or whether you've got a presence on uh, Instagram or you've got something on Facebook, 85%. And then email marketing is still big uh, as of 2015. These numbers are dropping somewhat because of the cybersecurity, but amongst safe senders, email still is effective. And then here, you hold revenue events. You have relationships that you build with media companies using public relations. This is publicity, again, like I was saying, offering press releases and things like that. And then print marketing is still very much used because when you're looking on your social media site, you are seeing a print ad. So print advertising has not gone away. It's just changed channels. It's not so much in magazines which have less circulation than they did 10 years ago, it's all print ads moved online. So really, you're doing basic marketing. You have a marketing mix. And that's what we teach in principles of marketing. You do the same thing in the nonprofit sector. You use your marketing mix to reach your clients and your donors. Those are your two most important stakeholders that you have in a nonprofit, the clients you serve and the donors who are supporting you. So you want to know what both of those parties want and need. Uh, but you, at the same time, while you're serving and supporting them and you're appreciating them, you also need to stick true to your core values and your mission. So you do things that business does. You try and differentiate, make yourself unique because you have lots of competitors and you position yourself maybe with a little more of a niche type of approach where you're doing something narrower maybe than all the other competition out there doing something similar, you try and find some sort of competitive advantage. And you would do that by doing the techniques that I talked about, uh, partnering with companies, making strategies and so forth. 
segment your market, spend a lot of time on your promotional efforts and so forth so that you really do get it right and, and work with the subgroups and narrow them down so that you really do know who your clients are. Okay, folks, that's all I wanted to talk about this time. I'll talk to you again soon.